I do this almost every time where I start a project and then when I'm almost done with the project I'm like oh crap I should have recorded this and this is one of those projects so let me show you what I've got going on here here we have my rooster over there I don't know if you can hear him um, I put up 65 foot of T-post and a rabbit fence because I've been having some rabbits and ground squirrels digging in these holes since I dug them. I use the Pro Yama post hole digger to dig these holes. Rooster, rooster. So let me bring you up to speed. I use the Pro Yama post hole digger that I just did a video on to dig these holes. There's 12 holes. I've got 12 plants. They're spaced about four feet apart. Once I used it to dig the hole, it creates this like volcanic eruption mound thing of soil that's a couple inches elevated off the ground. And then I backfill with part of the clay soil but I also use a soil mix a raised bed garden mix that has a lot of wood wood products and that sort of thing in it that will kind of serve as compost over time I also put um, a pretty healthy dose of my own compost in there so the holes are about uh, between two and three feet deep and 12 inches in diameter, give or take. And I literally uh, put a, I have a uh, probably about a one and a half gallon bucket. So I put a whole scoop of my compost in there. And then I do like a 50 50 mix of whatever's left over of the clay and the um, raised bed garden mix soil. Um, so as I'm planting these plants, I wanted to kind of show you, I've already done two. This one's done. I'm skipping every other hole because I have a thornless variety and also a thorn variety. They are both uh, Freedom Arc, or they're both uh, Prime Arc. One is called the Freedom and I think the other one's called the 45. I'll put in the description if that's wrong. So anytime I plant anything, whether it's berries or fruit trees or garden, garden vegetables, I kind of use the same process. Um, you can kind of tell here there's so much clay in the soil, you can't grow anything in it uh, other than grass and weeds seem to do really well. Um, that is why that everything I have is in raised beds. So there's my orchard, which I'm getting ready to expand, which is another video. I've got the fence and the post laying up there. I'm, I'm putting in another, uh, from the current orchard, three foot past this, it will be a total of uh, 25 more feet um, where I'm going to put in... Uh, six more five by five raised beds in this spot here and then this spot is three foot then there will be another three foot on this side more as a walkway than anything and also to keep up deer and stuff away from I don't know if they eat blackberries or not but they seem to eat everything else and that seems like a pretty good way because I've got basically a three foot area on either side of my raised beds there which is big enough to get a wheelbarrow through if you go to collect um, fruit you know it makes maintenance easier that sort of thing I also have in the back of my truck you can't really see it from here let me try to zoom in some on that on the back of my truck I've got uh, pine shavings I buy them from tractor supply there's not really a bulk place around here that sells it and it's about five dollars a bag so there's about a hundred dollars if you buy 20 bags you get a discount so I always buy at least 20 bags of it um, all right so kind of the way I do everything 
when I plant it. You kind of see that I've got some supplies here. One is Job's Organic Fruit and Nut. Um, I also have another Job's Organic that is uh, uh, it's the tomato one, which is what I mostly use in the garden. Um, then I have, I always save my empty coffee containers and everybody asks why. Well, this is one reason. So I have a uh, Folgers coffee container that I put azomite in. It's easier to carry around a coffee container than it is to carry around a 40 or sometimes 60 pound bags. Um, I have a great white and I never know how to pronounce this exactly. It's a uh, mycorrhizae. I think that's how it's pronounced. Uh, and then I also have uh, this fertilizer is actually a sulfur based fertilizer. Uh, slow release. Blackberries prefer a 6 to 6.8 pH. And of course, the soil you buy from a store is always neutral. So it's at 7 generally, unless you buy a specific acid loving soil. Um, and the other thing about soil you buy that's in a bag is it's also sterile, which is why I have the azomite the fertilizer and the mycorrhizae. So what I do, I've got the plant sitting there so I can measure the depth. I dig deeper than I need to. And the way that I did the fruit trees, I'll put a link up to that one too. I've already done to these holes. Um, so before I backfilled them in the bottom of these holes, before I added the soil, there's also um, a pretty healthy dose of fertilizer. It's kind of based on the grandma white method I mentioned. There's a fertilizer, some of the old soil, some new soil. Uh, basically everything that's right here is also in the bottom of this hole that's two and a half or three feet deep. So I dig deeper than I in need it to be. See there, the plant sits way down in the hole. Then I add some fertilizer. This is the organic fertilizer. I add some azomite. Pretty healthy dose of it. You can never have too much azomite. Uh, azomite is also great on existing gardens. I use this stuff all the time. I gave some to my mom and she absolutely loved it. She put it on, I think it was some fruit trees or vegetables or something that were not doing very good. She said within two or three days of putting azomite uh, on them, around them, they perked right back up. So uh, she said, what was that stuff you gave me? Cause I basically gave it to her in a coffee can. And I told her, I was like, here, I'll just send you the link to Amazon. And they went and went and ordered a bag of it. Um, this is the, the fertilizer that acidifies the soil also. It's slow release. It has some sulfur in it, but it's not like a lot. All right. So now that I've got this done, you can kind of see I actually spread inside the hole and around the hole. Now that I have that done, I kind of backfill this some until I get it up to the level I want it to be. So basically what I'm doing, I'm creating a buffer where what I've put in there so far doesn't come in contact with the existing roots. Just a little bit further. And I do that because I don't want the, I don't want the roots to get burned by any of the fertilizer I've stuck in there. All right, so that looks about right. So now that I have that done, this is going to be hard to do holding this. I go to the great white. Now it comes with a little measuring cup. And I don't go all the way full and sometimes I don't always use all of it. But I literally put this all around everywhere I want the roots to be in contact with this. So I sprinkle it around everywhere. And there are some people that will just take the plant. Of course, the soil is wet. 
you can kind of see the the brown, the powdery, then the brown. Um, but the thing is, you want the roots to come in contact with that. So now it's sitting right on top of it once I put the plant in. Now I take this soil that I kind of pulled away. I try to mix it up some, somewhat. And then I backfill this too. Of course, I'm firming the soil down around it, trying to keep the original level Okay, so once I have all that done, I go back. This is the Job's fertilizer, the organic fertilizer. I go around the plant in a circular motion. I also get the fertilizer with the sulfur in it for acid loving plants. I go around the plant. And then I also go back with a little bit more azomite and go around the plant. So what will happen is, is that once I add the pine shavings as my mulch, I'll come up to about this area. So I'm going to pass that ring and then that will help everything break down. And uh, when I get all these planted, I'll come back and show you what it looks like. The other thing is too, is the mulch will keep from The mulch will also help keep weeds from growing and it'll actually kill this grass over time. It won't be instantaneous. There will be a few places that pop up, but it will actually kill it. I'm going to get a lot of mud on my shoes. I actually want this to be several inches thick, but I don't want it all the way up to the plant. So you're going to leave, you're going to leave a space around the plant so that you don't suffocate it. And also if the, uh, a lot of plants, if the stems stay wet, it'll cause a thing called a stem rot. You don't really want that either. And this will actually settle down pretty good. I've used it in pretty much all of my raised bed areas in the walkways. I normally use straw as the mulch around plants. But uh, it takes us so much longer to break down. I'm going to start using pine everywhere. I mean, it's in the garden walkway. I usually have to redo the pine shavings in the walkways about every other year, whereas the straw I have to do every year. And I don't know if you can tell, I'm actually on a hillside. And uh, so when I built up the mounds to plant these in, I kind of built them out so they're leveled. So this side over here, closest to me on each plant is higher 
than the side on the back so that way that the surface was flat and that way water couldn't run off when it did rain and then also another reason for having these pine shavings is is it will rain falls on it it absorbs the rain and then it slowly leaks it back into the ground and releases it you know over a time period versus it just pouring down rain and all the rain running down the hill and uh i did that method on the uh the fruit trees up there and it's worked really well the fruit trees are actually set into the ground the raised beds so the edge that's farthest away from me may be even with the ground and then the edge closest to me might be nine or ten inches off the ground because I use two by tens on those raised beds. I was just in here editing this video and realized I did not do like a finished walkthrough. So this is kind of what it looks like. I think that it turned out pretty good. We've had rain the last two days. And all the plants seem like they're doing pretty decent. Might be starting to get some, I'm actually starting to see some uh, orange leaf rust. That's the one that's not as, uh, let me show you what that looks like by the way. if you'll be able to see it or not but that is orange leaf rust that you can treat there's another uh, there's another orange fungus that blackberries and other brambles can get that you have to destroy the plants if they get it but this is just leaf rust you can see it on uh, also starting to suspect that my pH is off so I'll have to check that in a couple of days of course the pH isn't something that's done right away it takes a little bit of time and also shortly after doing that we also cleaned up and weeded the orchard these are cherry trees this bed is currently empty but will next year have strawberries this is apple trees this is peach trees and there will be two more peaches that go in there this is plums four different varieties of plums this is a single pair there will actually be three more pairs that go in there and uh, and some black-eyed Susans.